Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Welcome. Tonight I am bringing you a Goliath Bird Eater Molt video. I think this is a really cool one. I have a fairly large specimen of an animal that I believe is a female. <clears throat> uh, this animal was sold to me as a blondi, although I do actually think that it's a stermi. Got a little guest here. My little puppy got hurt on Christmas Eve and so he's going to see the vet tomorrow. He hurt his ankle. So if you um, hear any yelping during the film, he's insisting on still following me around even though his ankle is sore. He looks like a skin blob. <laughs> Brutus, say hi everyone. Come here. Brutus, yeah, say hi. So he's just gonna be bumbling around in the background because he's hurt. So he wants to be with his mommy right now. Anyway, so don't mind all the bumping around. Okay, as I said, this is the malt of a, what I believe to be a Theraphosis stermi. And so without any further ado, let's take a peek. Here we have the lovely lady. And you can see her big, beautiful malt. And these animals are notorious hair kickers. So usually when you see them, they've got a big bald patch on their abdomen. And she is perfectly covered in hair because she's not kicked off any of those hairs yet. And so this is definitely the most beautiful stage. This animal has nice long hair on the patella. Um, you can see how large her cephalothorax is. And so she's a little bit thin because she hadn't been eating because she had outgrown her exoskeleton. And now that she has fully hardened, it's been about a week, I didn't want to disturb her before now because they are very fragile and vulnerable right after the molt. And I didn't want to upset or startle her because they can hurt themselves quite easily. And so now that she has fully recovered from her molting process, wanted to show you her beautiful exoskeleton. One of the neatest things about the exoskeleton in my opinion, is the holes where you can see that the legs went in. And another favorite feature of the molt is seeing their fangs because they even molt their fangs. This is an animal with a huge formidable fang and you can even see they have beautiful red hair all around the mouth. Just imagine being a tiny little prey item that was going into that mouth. That would be quite frightening. So now that she has fully recovered from her molt, as I said, it's safe to show her to you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and feed her nice and heavily. A little tip before a molt, when you see your animals getting near to that stage, make sure they're nice and humid because they actually have to bump, pump a level, pump a layer of water in between their old exoskeleton and their new, like a hydraulic, I don't know how to explain it, but they actually use that water to literally burst out of their old exoskeleton and it's a really incredible process. Usually the first place to split is the side of the cephalothorax and then they just slowly pump that water and squeeze and wiggle out of there. Then that when they're finally free, their new exoskeleton is very soft and see through their fangs are completely translucent and it's not hard at all. There may be some feeding videos of her coming up soon, 
But while she was perfectly fresh and clean, I wanted you to see her nice and up close. Check out the leg span on this girl. And that's when she's kind of shriveled up and hardened already. Golly, I would not want to be a little bug or a mouse coming across her path in the wild. That would be frightening. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Therafosa molt video. If you have questions about the process of tarantula molting, make sure and list them below. And also, if you're a tarantula keeper, let me know if you know how to gender identify a tarantula by their molt. If not, maybe I'll do a video about that next. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon.